Joining us now is Tara Palmieri of Puck News, but for our purposes, friend of the show who's done some great work on Jeffrey Epstein and more, has a very interesting new documentary out for Discovery Plus. It's titled Dr. Delirium and the Edgewood Experiments. Let's take a listen to the preview and then Tara, let's talk all about it. You feel the effects of the agent? Everything's moving. Delirium was produced experimentally. They had no idea what the drug was going to do to us. They just moved the monkey out of the way and put me in there behind it. The mission was to find a drug that would produce incapacitation. We had millions of dollars to work with, and I built the program around that. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> The effects of the psychochemical become apparent. We brought over Nazi chemists to work in our labs. They had to do what they were told back in Europe. All I heard, the doctors that were standing around, turn it off, turn it off, because I was taking too much. Look, I've got regrets about a number of things I've done, but that would not apply to the work I did at Edgewood. I thought I did a pretty good job with that. Very interesting, Tara. So tell us, why did you gravitate towards the story? Uh, how did you get interested in it? And then how did the documentary kind of come to be? Right. So this is just like a horrifying piece of our history, um, using human beings, young servicemen as essentially human guinea pigs. Right. Um, this was during the Cold War and America was desperate to get ahead of Russia in terms of its warfare. And they believed that mind control and chemical warfare was the future. Um, so Edgewood Arsenal, which is right outside of D.C., it's our premier uh, chemical testing site. They would sort of lure these young servicemen, either taking some time off from Vietnam, where they, many of them served, or just away from their regular duties um, to come for a few months and be tested on. They had to sign all these document, these docu doc, um, these uh, classified documents. Um, they can never speak about it. It was a secrecy oath for so many years, and they were just put in gas chambers, gas masks. They were not testing on them like, you know, chemicals like, uh, you know, Agent Orange or Sarin. They were testing things to see if they could change their brains, if they could change their minds. Wow. Um, and these were not like, this wasn't like LSD or mushrooms or, or a drug that's enjoyable. They were trying BZ, which is like, even, even street druggies don't want this drug. Like, it's just mm -hmm. not an enjoyable trip. It's like one of the worst trips of your life. And the remarkable thing to me is that for so many years, the military just brushed these guys under the rugs. They, they denied their VA complaints. They said, they basically said they were crazy. They couldn't speak up about it because they signed secrecy oaths. And, you know, now they're adults, um, they're, they're grown men at the end of their career. And they just want some recognition for what they did. And this was really like at the height of the CIA, Sidney Gottlieb, um, you know, period of time with like project climax when they were, uh, you know, drugging Johns with, um, LSD. And, and there was a lot of experimentation going on. In fact, like LSD was brought to this country by the CIA. And these were just like good country boys in their twenties who didn't know that they were in for the trip of their life. And they still, some of them say they wake up in the middle of the night with, with nightmares. They still can't get past those months, those, those haze, the haze that they experience. And then the worst part about all of it, sorry, I don't mean to, to go too much into it, but the worst no, part about no. it is that at that time in the Cold War, after we tried these Nazi doctors, the Nuremberg trials, there was a fight. It's called Project Paperclip because it was a paperclip in their visa mm -hmm. to get them on our side as chemical scientists. And so many of these Nazi doctors at, at Nuremberg, and you see this in the documentary, were actually brought over from Germany to conduct test studies on our own soldiers. It's, it's just, so it's an incredibly horrifying story, an abuse of power. And they kept these 7,000 young servicemen quiet because they made them sign secrecy oaths that were literally in effect until the late 80s. Wow. How long was this going on and how did the public catch wind of it? 20 years. And it 
it was amazing. There ended up being some hearings and it was mainly about the CIA and what Sidney Gottlieb was doing, just drugging everyone with LSD. One of the main test subjects, which you learned about in the documentary, ended up killing himself and his wife. Uh-huh. Um, it, the, the effects, the psychological effects of these drugs were unreal. They did no follow up. Like if you were signing up to be a, a um, you mm-hmm. know, for a clinical trial, you would expect follow up, right? Especially when it's the government. Um, and they, they, they didn't follow up with these people at all. And their lives became so derailed. And I think that's one of the most heartbreaking parts of this. And they just sued the government recently. Um, and I believe that there, it's, there are still some questions about how they'll be compensated, but mainly they just want some sort of recognition. Right. They want to be right. recognized as test vets that um, sadly for them, the chemicals that they used are not really, are not using, chem- are not used in warfare. So they feel a bit like this 20 year period of time where they offered their bodies up basically. Right. Um, and so, yeah, it was can kind you, of not. let's get, let's stick on that then. So have they not received any compensation from the VA? Have any congressmen, is anybody speaking up on well, their behalf or, yeah, go ahead. We're still working on that right now, actually. Um, it's They still haven't gotten proper recognition. You know, they're working with uh, Congress right now to, to just at least be acknowledged. Their VA benefits are still in question. It's really sad that they have to spend the last years of their life fighting for VA benefits, right? Yeah. Um, I think they would also like to be compensated in addition to that. I mean, a lot of them had problems holding down jobs, keeping relationships. Um, they, they cite, like, divorces, nervous breakdowns. And the worst part about it was that they couldn't go to their doctors and say, hey, when I was in my 20s, I was used as part of these experiments. And um, by the way, the video in the documentary is all classified footage of the experiments. Wow. Many, We actually have some of the test vets watch the experiments from when they were younger. They're classified videos that are now un, like seen for the first time. And it is chilling. And you can just, I mean, every single one of them broke down into tears seeing themselves being manipulated and abused like that. I mean, it's uh, just as, wildly, as, so yeah, wildly unethical. Yeah, there's still so much to be done. And I know this was happening from the 1950s to 1970s. You know, there were, the CIA was out of control then under the guise of the, of the Cold War. And we've seen stories about it, but it's never really been connected to the military and how they too took advantage of so many, you know, in this race for arms and, and how they really haven't been held accountable for it. Do you think something like this could happen today? Because I think that's the the bigger question is, as you said, this is, you know, a horrifying story, massive abuse of power, massive cover up, kept secret for decades and decades, um, only revealed under pressure. Those who were subjected to this uh, Nazi drug experimentation still fighting for benefits. I mean, do we have safeguards in place so that we could be assured that something this horrific wouldn't happen again? That's a really good question, Crystal. And in fact, like there are still, there's, I mean, that's part of our military. It's to constantly be experimenting, right? So many of these camps are known for their kind of experimentations. We're in the process right now of creating like post PTSD super soldiers, right? Or um, creating soldiers that have like implantations in their brains to make them the perfect shot or to be able to not even have to use their hands or their bodies to be, you know, literal like machines, like military machines. And this is happening right now. And there's always going to be that ethical line and there's going to be the push to cross it. Right. Um, and that's just part of like the arms race. It's just like something that so much of that work is classified and that's why it's hard. And I just hope that through knowing what happened with the Edgewood experiments, that we can prevent something like this from happening again and that there are safeguards and that these people aren't sworn to secrecy oaths for their entire lives Um, but it's absolutely still happening again. It is just a fact of modern warfare. Wow. Yeah. Well, Tara, thank you so much for highlighting this. I've always respected your ability to highlight stories, you know, from this to Jeffrey Epstein and more. I encourage everybody to go check out the documentary and to check out your work. We're Puck News subscribers here over at Breaking Point. So thank you. you very much for joining us. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for watching. We really appreciate it. Premium subs, keep selling those tickets. You're doing a great job. Thank you so much. We deeply, deeply appreciate it. The presale is going to continue up until Thursday, so you guys get the first access to all of those. If you want early access to the tickets, go ahead and sign up. Uh, yeah, it's been fun, Crystal. We're watching the numbers tick up. We're proving to the world, to the industry, BP can sell tickets. Uh, in the meantime, we'll see you guys on Thursday. Love you guys. See you here Thursday.
cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.